and welcome to a new week of meals. I'm starting off with a pasta with meat sauce. I purchased this large six pound tin for $3 and then I've got some clearance ground bison. So I'm gonna turn that into a meat sauce. First step is to defrost my bison since I didn't do so ahead of time. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the heat or cook and scrape method on the stovetop. So I'm just gonna do that until everything's defrosted and then I'm gonna cook the bison through. This is my first time using ground bison and I was pleasantly surprised to be honest. I could not tell the difference between this and ground beef and neither could the guys. So I'd say, you know, if you're hesitant about using it, it's just, it's really lean and it's, you know, it's really good, very flavorful, tastes a whole lot like a ground beef. So I'm just gonna brown this now, um, finish the part, finish cooking the parts that are not cooked through. I'm trying to break it up as small as possible so I have little bits of meat running throughout the sauce. going to add some aromatics now so I've got my onion here I'm gonna add some garlic and then I'm also gonna add a little bit of oil because as I mentioned it's a very very lean meat as uh, so I'm just adding a little bit of oil here just help everything come together some salt and pepper to season a little bit and that is some Italian seasoning as well I'm also gonna put in if I haven't already and I can't really tell oh there we go a very huge helping of minced garlic I'm gonna stir that through until it kind of gets a little bit softened and then I'll mix everything and add the uh, diced tomatoes. And here you go with the diced tomatoes. It is a very, very large tin. I could not pass up this deal. My idea was to use as much of this as possible and freeze the rest. So here we go with, I think I do like about two or three big ladles. And um, you can puree some of this ahead of time if you don't like it really chunky. But I thought I'd go ahead and try for a chunky tomato sauce. Um, not really like a marinara, but you know, like a meat sauce with some tomatoes. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna go in with a bit of the tomato juice here so that it can help coat the pasta once all of this meat sauce is done. So just a little bit, you know, as much as you like. You can add water if you like, maybe chicken broth, um, or as I mentioned, you can puree some of the tomatoes and make a little bit of a, um, a saucier meat sauce, if that makes any sense. And I'm adding my secret ingredient, which isn't so much of a secret, it's ketchup. I'm just adding a little bit of ketchup in lieu of tomato paste, just to give it a little bit of thickness, a little body, a little bit of sweetener, that is monk fruit with erythritol. You can use sugar or just completely omit it. I do like my sauce as a teensy bit sweet. This is not a sweet, sweet sauce. Like if you ever had a Filipino spaghetti, which is crazy sweet it's not like that at all just wanted to enhance and bring out the sweetness of the tomatoes so i'm going to give it a little bit of a taste and do any kind of adjustments i think are necessary and that's pretty much the sauce done and lastly i'm just serving with my 99 cent clearance garlic bread and that is our dinner for the first night of the week a little bit of parmesan cheese and uh, there's the garlic bread. I didn't make it super toasty, but I went ahead and put it in later because Colin likes it a little crispy on the top. So, but that is our dinner for the first night of the week. Next up, I'm making a Chinese chicken salad or Asian salad. I got this clearance a big bag of salad for $2.99, so that is exactly what I'm using. I have some, uh, there's some wontons in there. There's this dressing is already included. So the only thing I added was um, obviously the chicken. I've got some green onions and some sesame seeds as well. You can toast the sesame seeds. I did not, but that's pretty much it. So I'm just adding the chicken to this. Just chicken tenderloin is what I used. Oh, I actually have some mandarin oranges. Completely forgot about those. But yes, I did drain. I rinsed and drained them and then um, just giving this a toss uh, With the dressing the dressing is already in there. It was kind of like a sweet Asian sesame uh, Dressing that was included in the in the bag But that's pretty much it and then I'm going to top it with the wontons of crispy fried wontons that were included in the salad kit 
And there are those wontons that were included. Um, definitely not as good as if you fry them yourself. Um, but my wonton wrappers I thought I had had gone bad so in any case we ended using this and it was nice and crispy and still added a little bit to the salad so that is our dinner for the next night of the week a chicken Asian salad for the third meal of the week I decided I really really wanted to make a chili because it was a gray gloomy day and even though I had planned something else on the menu this was definitely on my mind so I took some of the more of the ground bison that I had and I'm using it again for this particular recipe I'll link the recipe below this is the Wendy's copycat chili. Now I did kind of tweak it like I normally do, but um, it, for all intents and purposes, I followed the recipe. <laughs> so again, recipe down below. I'm making more use of the big tin of tomatoes that I used earlier in the video. I am gonna puree a little bit of it here just so that I can make up for the tomato, I believe it's to crush tomatoes or tomato sauce that the recipe calls for. In any case, use what the recipe and follow the recipe to a T if you'd like, but I'm just using what I have on hand because I didn't have any other tomatoes. So here we go, I'm gonna add some onions. You can also do this in a separate uh, fry pan if you'd like and soften the onions. I'm just gonna put it all in the same container kind of cook it all like a crock pot but on the stove so there is that ground bison that I mentioned I defrosted it a little bit in the microwave and then I went ahead and dumped it in it's still a little bit frozen in the middle but I'm just going to use that heat and scrape kind of thing um, I'm going to watch over it here just to make sure I scrape it down as soon as the meat starts to uh, starts to cook up going to break up that ground bison now and then I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of my ingredients. So we've got a can, a large can of kidney beans and we've got some pinto beans as well. I left the liquid as per the recipe. I'm just going to mix that in here. It makes it actually quite easy to follow this recipe because you don't have to drain it or anything. I'm using all that I have left of my chili powder which turned out to be the perfect amount. So I'm just going to dump that in there and then I'm going to go in with the other spices. So we've got um, that is onion powder that I decided to add and then we've got some cumin here again this is all the cumin I had left I can't believe it so I need to restock my spices um, but there you go I'm gonna put that in there we've got some pepper um, I believe there yes there's the salt and I decided to add a bit of beef bouillon beef flavored bouillon and I'm just gonna stir that up stir it up taste it see if it tastes all right and then make any adjustments as necessary And there's that bottle of ketchup again <laughs> I like to add it to my sauces it just really enhances I think um, I don't know that's just my palate but you do you you don't want to add ketchup don't add ketchup just gonna give it a taste test and make any adjustments and then this recipe actually requires you to uh, let it simmer on the stove for at least two hours so once I finish all the tasting and adjusting that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm gonna come back periodically and give it a stir just to make sure nothing is burning or sticking to the bottom but that is pretty much it and then I'll taste it a little bit later uh, after the two hours is up and make any adjustments again it looks like I'm adding a bit of cayenne here just to give it a little kick the recipe calls for jalapenos I believe I didn't have any jalapeno peppers oh and there's the celery I forgot to add the celery so I'm adding it now I actually kind of liked adding it uh, later because it gave the chili a bit of texture and the celery a little bit of a it was a little not crunchy per se but again just a different texture in the chili but if you'd like you can go ahead and saute that in with the onions and then it will cook down nice and soft and kind of just blend into the chili to go with the chili I'm gonna make cornbread of course so I had this a uh, box of Jiffy corn muffin mix. I'm going to prepare it according to the instructions, kinda. <laughs> so I'm gonna dump this here. Instead of doing the milk, I'm going to add two thirds cup of creamed corn, and then like a sixth, I would say, um, of water. 
uh, a sixth of a cup of water to this to replace the milk since I didn't I think it requires milk so I'm just adding that I like to add cream corn if I can just for added texture a little moisture I don't know it, it makes it a nice moist uh, corn muffin uh, cake so I'm gonna put this in a casserole dish like a baking dish and I'm gonna cook it that way instead of making muffins but um, and then I cook it for I think probably about 15 to 17 minutes it just depends on your oven made sure to grease it here just to make sure it doesn't stick I just actually used olive oil if you have butter go for it um, but I didn't feel like taking out the butter and using that so I just decided to do some oil and it worked perfectly fine And there's the finished cake that I let cool on the stove. Nice and moist, really tasty. It just, it was really like a, a lighter cake texture. It wasn't super dense or anything like that, but it has a little bit of that creamy component to it, if, if you can call it creamy, <laughs> because of the creamed corn. I don't know, it was just a, I like that kind of uh, texture to the cornbread. have it chili topped with more green onions there just for nice some color and flavor some sour cream and cheese and there is the cornbread and that was the perfect foil to a gray gloomy day Last meal I'm cooking up for you is this Polska kielbasa that I actually got on sale for 97 cents. I bought four of them and stuck them in the freezer. Defrosted this one here, I'm slicing it up. I'm gonna cook this on the stove top. I'm gonna add some cabbage, kind of braise that. I'm all gonna do it in one pot just to make it super easy. I was feeling very, very lazy, super tired, did not really wanna cook, but this ended up being so fast and so tasty. So hope you give this one a try. I had half of a cabbage left from a previous recipe, so what I'm doing here is just I'm cutting off all the parts that kind of are a little brown, but the rest of it's perfectly fine, so I'm just going to cut that up in smaller chunks and then set that aside, and I'm also going to cut up an onion as well, so it's going to be the sausage, cabbage, and onion are essentially the main ingredients. Super easy, really inexpensive, and very tasty. I'm gonna heat up some oil now and I'm gonna go ahead and um, cook the onion. I'm gonna sweat the onion and what you can do if you want, you can cook the sausage separately, but like I mentioned, I'm just doing this all in one pot. <laughs> it's all gonna go in the same place, in my mouth and in my stomach, so I don't really care. And again, this is just home cooking. It's for my family, nothing fancy or anything. So here we go. We're gonna get the onions going. I'm gonna try to soften them and maybe get a little bit of color on it if possible. If not, no big deal. Adding a little space in the middle so I can add the sausage. Um, this would be great in a you know a deeper fry pan if you want so you could spread it out a little bit more and get a nice kind of browned seared crust on the uh, sausage but anyway I just let mine go a little bit and um, it kind of looks burnt but it tasted perfectly fine and then I'm just gonna stir that around and add the cabbage and then what I'm gonna do is I mentioned I'm gonna kind of braise the cabbage a little bit so I'm gonna do add a little bit of liquid to this and really I'm only gonna add probably about a quarter cup of water with some chicken bouillon you can use just water itself or um, some chicken stock but there you go I'm mixing the cabbage the sausage and the onion I'm gonna add liquid and a li little bit of chicken bouillon as well as some other little things that I will mention in just a little bit 
Give it a good stir to make sure that bouillon is mixed through. You could have mixed it into the water or I could have done that. <laughs> mix it into the water to make sure it was nice and dissolved uh, before adding it to this. But I, again, you know, I'm just being lazy here. I really just didn't want to cook. I just wanted to get it done. So just stirring that up. I'm going to put a lid, uh, get the cabbage going a little bit so it starts to wilt and cook down going to give this a stir and now I'm going to add a little bit of some flavor a little jazz it up a little bit so what I'm going to do is add a little bit of caraway seeds it's just a nice flavor I think it goes well with braised cabbage um, there are some other braised cabbage recipes that I've seen and made before that have some caraway seed in it if you like the flavor, go for it. It's the flavor of the little seeds that are in a slice of rye bread. So if you like that, you'll like this. A little bit of apple cider vinegar I do add and some pepper. And that's pretty much it. Again, give it a taste. If it needs more salt, go for it. I think it's gonna vary from sausage to sausage. Some sausages are a lot saltier than others and you know, um, or maybe they have different seasonings that they put in. So just give it a little taste and adjust it to the way you like it. And the last thing I'm going to add is a bit of butter. Yeah, this was a total last minute, just kind of spontaneous thing that I wanted to add as well as a little salt here it looks like. I don't know, I just thought it needed a little richness to it, kind of tie everything in. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the dish done. I served mine just as is. I didn't add any sides or anything to it. Uh, Rob ate his with some instant rice and Colin ended up actually having some leftover chili. So again, a very simple meal, so fast, really tasty, one pot, just, you know, give it a try. It's, it's super easy to do. You can also serve this with pasta if you'd like. Some noodles would be good, like egg noodles or something, or maybe potatoes, uh, whatever you like. Anyway, that is it for the week. I was exhausted and just ready to eat and just call it a night. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys get, got some good ideas and inspiration for meals for your families. And I will see you in the next video. Take care until then.